It's me, Vera, here to remind you that this is an adult podcast. That means we're going to deal with tough topics. Take a break if you need it, and be kind to yourself, because we sure won't be. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Crack Crown, Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition podcast. As always, I am your storyteller, Mike Martin, joined today by the one and only Mark Muir. Hey, Mark, Hello. what's up, man? Oh, not How too much. I just got, just got back from various RPG things. I was at D3 at Sea, and then I was uh, doing a thing called Gaming at the Lake down at Lake St. Clair. Do you Georgia. remember the olden days when there was just a convention season and then it was done and then you could just yeah. do <laughs> life stuff? <laughs> that stopped so long ago. I can't remember when uh, when the last time that was, but it feels True. like that, that con season no longer ends. There's always something to go do to, to be there. So it's good to have you back. You missed uh, a couple of uh, exciting episodes and uh, mm-hmm. a little bit of um, a, a little. Ca- we'll say Vera got a little upset at the. Uh, Haven they were gifted, shall we say. So we'll see. I'm sure, not, Ma- uh, I'm sure Max would be fine with it, whatever it is. That's what I feel. I feel like Max is going to be totally fine. Veer has got <laughs> high taste. You know how she is. So uh, today we're just going to be doing a one shot with you. And uh, for the listeners, we obviously Max was not with the, the Coterie on arrival to Gary. So we're going to see why that's the case, what Max is up to and all that. And uh, yeah, so before we start, as always, thank you guys so much for the support. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be able to do this as far as we've gone, as I say, every single week. You truly get, you really are the lifeblood of this show. Um, and if you want to jump in and like go above and beyond and just pitch in further, you can go to patreon.com slash pod by night, jump into one of the tiers. They all get a little something extra. And uh, it really just makes, it makes us able to bring on more people, do more guests, make the show longer. Uh, I think right now our current goal is to make this season 30 episodes. So if you want to go and push toward that goal, Please do. That would be a lot of fun to be able to dig into Gary even further. Uh, beyond that, joining our Discord, which is totally free. There's a ton of conversation. I feel like the past two or three days has just seen like 20 new people jump in. So jump into the Discord. Come talk theories and talk shows. And uh, if you want to support us, you can also go ahead and sub out to our Twitch channel, which is uh, twitch.tv slash pod by night, or buy some of our merch, which you can get on our link tree over at twitter.com slash pod by night. I think that's everything. All right. I'm excited to play. So as always, let's set the scene, rein things in, and see what Max is up to. The camera starts at the top of a building. Brick, decayed, windows shattered, and sharp pieces of glass still jagging out of its window frame. As it pans down this two-story brick building, you can see the doors have been boarded, spray paint all across the sides of various different uh, designs and uh, curse words, of course. But the camera ignores all that, and we move to street level. And as we move to the street, a single car, uh, a 2001 Toyota Corolla, careens by, missing all of its hubcaps except for one, and a loud thumping music rattling the frame of the car. As it drives by, it runs the red light at the end of the block, and that's the only sign of life that we really see here on this lonely dead street at uh, 1 a.m. on this fine evening. Further down still, a manhole cover sits, merely two inches pressed up above the road, and as we close in our vision, we can see recognizable glowing yellow eyes that sit just within the darkness that disappear when the manhole is finished. It's lowering, and we hear a gentle clink of the metal on concrete. Before long, our camera blurs underneath. We'd pass through the asphalt and concrete, and we find ourselves in a very small tunnel. It's concrete, round, and there's a trickle of water that runs toward the center, moving, uh, moving toward the center of town. And as we, uh, as the lights, uh, rather, as the darkness falls and our eyes adjust, standing there, hand on the manhole cover, as he is tall enough to reach it in these sewers, is Max, with a trench coat on, his long, sharp, purple ears, bat-like face and tall figure. And next to him, another familiar purple face, with a jacket thrown over her to cover herself, and a hoodie with her hood pulled up, 
uh, blocking her ears, but we can see that definitive purple skin underneath there as well. And just as the manhole covers, uh, closes, and Max takes a step into the water. Max, welcome to Gary, Indiana. You left two nights later than Vera, Duke, and all the rest. They were to uh, head in separately, as you wanted to make sure that you could make contact with some of the Nosferatu here in Gary as best you could. You also had Adelaide to tag along, and you wanted to make sure everything was set with her, and she was all taken care of before moving. But here you are in Gary, Indiana, and perhaps it's surprising how dead this city looks. For what little you've walked through, almost every building is in some form of disrepair. Huge abandoned steel mills sit as the skyline of Gary, Indiana, a depressing reminder of the, of the fortune this small town once reaped before it all collapsed away in the 50s and 60s. And those who live here cling to this place for one of two reasons. It's all they've ever known, or they just can't afford to get out. Gary is known as the murder capital of the world. Adelaide sighs. It echoes just a bit, and she kind of glances around the small tunnel. I didn't realize the other sewers were so much tinier. New, uh, I guess New York is... I guess it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it ain't exactly the Ritz kid. Even for a shit tube, huh? She nods at that, but keeps her eyes covered by the hoodie as she steps through the water. And uh, she kind of looks back nervously. Do you know where we're supposed to meet them? Yeah, just up ahead here. Uh, listen. Max reaches into his trench coat and pulls forth uh, a small package. I got that thing for you, that thing I've been showing you how to use. Now, it's loaded, but the safety's on. And that's for emergencies only, right? Yeah, yeah, only emergencies. I've, uh... I just feel like I need more practice, you know? I just, uh, I'm, ner I'm nervous handling these things, even... Yeah, it's that's so, why I said, just for emergencies. And as you say that, she stops, uh, like, mumbling her nerves at you, just nods aggressively, and uh, holds her hand out for the gun. Now, what kind of gun did you give Adelaide? Are we looking like a typical kind of normal, like, 9 millimeter? Are we looking like, give her a six-shooter? Is there anything like, would Max I even think, think like that? It's probably a small automatic uh, okay. that can be easily concealed. And uh, probably uh, not something with too much kick. I don't think uh, sure. Adelaide has the sort of potence that uh, that Max does. Certainly not. Uh, her as you've as you've learned through her uh, spending time with her and discussing things with her, she, her talents lie more in the stealth and and uh, uh, disguise kind of scenario. While she does possess a strength greater than any kind, it matches. It comes. Uh, it's far away from matching Max's abilities in strength alone. Max is a uh, a powerhouse where she is not. Um, as she d unfolds it, do you want her to? Do you want her to unwrap it? Or you want her to leave it in the package because she's going to start to unwrap it. If you it, probably unwrap, if it is for emergencies, okay. it's best that it's unwrapped and you know. Uh, she takes it. Um, she does. She is has a small backpack thrown over her shoulders. Uh, she kind of pulls it off to one side. You hear it unzip, and she shoves it into the bag and zips it back up and throws it back over her shoulder with a bit of a pep in her step. Yeah, um, just uh, make sure that's in a pocket you can get too easy, huh? She nods uh, once again. So, uh, Max, as you begin to walk where you're supposed to meet this person, she opens up conversation. It w Am I just going to kind of be sitting around while I wait for you guys to finish your job here in Gary? Yeah, I figure we're going to get you stashed somewhere nice and safe. Uh, you and Max mm -hmm. Jr. as he reaches up and pets the hairless cat that's sitting on his shoulder. And you can hear it verbally purring loudly in your ear as you reach up. Before you even touch it, it reaches forward and boops its face on your hand itself and uh, gives you one of those little gentle cat licks of sandpaper tongue before uh, it settles again. Um, and she goes, uh, she, to con continue the conversation, she she's openly says to you, uh, you know, if you ever need anything, you can trust me, right? I, I did help Gustav uh, a few times, so I'm not incapable. Yeah, I, I, wanna, I just want to. I just want to feel like I earned my keep. I don't want to feel like I'm. I'm a mooch. I'm a leech on you guys. You ain't no leech, kid. Don't worry about it. You, she nods, but her body language, as you stare at her, she remains stiff. Her shoulders seem tight. You're not entirely sure she buys that line, even if Max truly means it. Um, there's something that seems to sit and chew away at her. Even now, it's very obvious to Max. You've known her for a while. 
but she doesn't further press and you continue walking along. The more the two of you walk the sewers, the, the, the sooner you begin to realize that the sewer is very simply laid out. It is a grid system. There's just rows and rows that are gridded along the entire city of Gary, with very little in terms of obvious nooks or dead ends, unlike the mazes of New York and uh, what little you got to see of Chicago's uh, sewers for the maybe the day or the night you poked your head down there. Uh, also ancient and old. Gary's very simple. Old as well, about as old as Chicago's, of course, but less, uh, there's no old Chicago sewer like there, uh, old Gary sewer like there is in Chicago. Um, and you could, and as you walk, it takes another maybe 15 or so minutes before up ahead. You don't have to make an awareness check. There seems to be uh, an individual that is um, pacing slightly back and forth, looking down at a dimly glowing screen in the palm of their hands. Uh, they don't seem to notice you immediately. Uh, and, uh, so Adelaide actually stops short when she sees them and looks to you. And I, uh, how does Max react? Hey buddy, what's the rumpus? Just shouting it out and the echoes kind of run through. And as you speak out to this person, you actually see a few rats scatter out from uh, under the water. You can hear splashes and there are no New York rats, that's for sure, but they're still pretty big. And his head- Easy, easy to MX Junior. I'm sure there's yeah, like, you can feel the tightness of the muscles as the cat's looking around and getting excited about the rats around. But yeah, you, you keep Max Jr. calm and the individual looks in your general direction. He's wearing a, uh, just a plain white t-shirt and long khaki pants with vans as shoes. Uh, as, as you get closer, you see the vans themselves are soaking wet, having been standing in sewer water forever, but he doesn't seem to care. And uh, do you, as you walk forward, do you, do you, is there, do you check to see if they're mortal or kindred, or are you, are you under an assumption that they're kindred? Uh, under the assumption they might be kindred, could okay. be a ghoul cool. though, so looking for the... Give me an awareness is, check. Tends then. to be the obvious yeah. signs of it is, uh, being a nos. It is in the sewers. It is dark, but you can still see a little bit. So make me an awareness check, please. Oh wow, three successes. So even with the difficulty of two or three, you would have succeeded. And uh, what you notice when you when you approach now again, it could be a kind having a uh, caused a blush of life upon themselves. But there's a rhythmic breathing happening. You can see them taking breaths. You can see them. Um, you know, doing all the things that mortals have to do to stay alive that their brains just do for them automatically. And as he turns to you uh, and he sees a very definitive Nosferatu standing before him, he, uh, he kind of just approaches those last few steps to meet you and says, so you are Max, I'm assuming? Yeah, that's me. Who are you? He reaches out his hand. You can call me Henry. Hey, yeah, Henry. How's it going? Welcome to uh, glorious Indiana, or should I say Gary, Indiana. Uh, it's a wonderful wow. home away from home. Nice place you got here. This here's Adelaide. She gives a kind of sheepish wave, but doesn't bring her head up to expose her face. Uh, kind of keeps her head down. Well. And uh, this here's Max Jr. I'm more of a dog guy. Nah, I get you. So, what's your story, Henry? Mm -hmm. Do my job, keep the peace, and hopefully live to see the next day. Uh, that sounds like a plan. He smiles at that. He's like, I am here on behalf of Mr. Danoff. As you were making your way, prepping for the trip to Chicago, before you even knew you were heading to Gary, Indiana, you, of course, met up with a few of the New York locals. In Kaiser, you had done a, quite a solid four in the past. So when asked about information about the Nosferatu out this way, uh, he did inform you that Gary, Indiana is right now uh, more or less uh, populated by a majority of Nos. It's mostly Nos that live in Gary. Um, however, the Gary is only tangentially important to Chicago, but the reason Kaiser spoke of it is because there's a Nosferatu that most people out there at least know about by the name of Alexander Danov. And all that uh, beyond the fact that he is rather old, as uh, Kaiser has informed you. Uh, he's on and has been on a foolish errand uh, chasing some fairy tales for centuries, lost to his own desires, um, and has mostly been ignored, but he's harmless, so they leave him. He's not done anything to go against the Camarilla, and the Camarilla stand is simple. If you don't go against the Camarilla, you're part of the Camarilla. So even Anarchs who claim to be Anarchs, as long as they are following the Camarilla laws, Camarilla considers them to be Camarilla. Uh, 
But that's all you were informed. And so he says he's here on behalf of Mr. Danoff to welcome you to Gary, Indiana. Well, that's uh, pretty neighborly of you. What can I say? He smiles. He's like, let's walk. Sounds good. Come on, Adelaide. You guys begin to walk and he begins to lead in a not so straightforward path. He walks and turns and sometimes he'll walk and do a U-turn and walk backward. Uh, reminiscent of somebody driving as though they were trying to lose someone. Um, but he continues to, to walk and says, well, uh, beyond uh, giving you a welcoming party and knowing that you were arriving with a guest as he looked to Adelaide, I'm not quite sure how I could help you. So if you have questions, I'd be happy to answer them. So, I understand there's a fair number of Nas here. He nods, uh, especially as of late, the past few months. I'm sure you've been told or perhaps uh, found out yourself, but Gary has um, lost quite a few uh, kindred in the past few months. It's left a bit of a power vacuum, and well, and he looks to you, your kind are quite useful when a power vacuum arrives. <laughs> yeah, I suppose we are. Uh... He smiles, a Nas can smell a boon, and there's plenty of boons to be earned in Gary at the moment. Yeah, well, boons, yeah, never mind. And as you say that, he's no. like, I, uh, I think Mr. Danov would agree with you, Max. Really? He's <laughs> not a man of favors and boons either. Interesting. Well, I look forward to eventually meeting them. He nods. Uh, perhaps you will if he feels that you should. Uh, he's a bit of a private man. Uh, regardless, uh, I'm not sure how much of Gary you've been informed of, uh, the current situation. I am aware that you have been sent by Prince. Uh, and so I will respect the authority of the Prince and the uh, traditions therein. Uh, if you have questions sure. about- why don't you, uh, why don't you just give me the cold notes of the General Sitch? Uh, in other words, what's the rumpus? <laughs> he smiles. Uh, it's unfortunately rather straightforward and a story as old as, uh, this oldest time. The leader of the Camarilla went missing. Uh, some believe that the Anarch Baron was the one to oust him until the Anarch Baron himself disappeared. Uh, some say it may be what's calling older kindred out to the Middle East. Others say they got the best of each other and killed each other off. Whatever the reason, it doesn't matter and doesn't affect me nor the people who live here in Gary uh, beyond the fact that the Nos are rather influential at the moment. With that said, the streets and the kindred on them are at each other's throats, rather you know, nightly. The bloodshed is minimal. They do fear the prince sending in his sheriff if need be, though I feel it would take quite a bit for the prince to send a sheriff out here. But regardless, the fear holds them at bay for now of the most violent acts. Uh, Beyond that, uh, Gary is simply in the throes of new leadership. Somebody will arise, someone will t claim Praxis, claim the Princeton, and find peace here again, or what peace Gary can find. That's the long and short of what you're dealing with right now. He looks around and he sees, uh, as he takes a moment and finishes that sentence, you walk a few feet, he stops, uh, looks to his left and his right. There seemed to be noise coming from both. And uh, as the noise settles, he continues to walk. More details, if I don't, I don't know what more you could want to know. I'm not entirely sure. I know you're here on the prince's demands or the prince's orders. Beyond that, I have no idea why you're here. And I'm not. Yeah, well, that's uh, that's kind of neat to know. You understand, I'm sure, Henry. That's how the that's typically how it works. Yes. Um, there's been. Beyond that, there's been a handful of kindred uh, forming small groups throughout Gary. Uh, there was an attempt at one point of those small groups to come together to form some sort of council. Uh, as you can imagine, kindred are kindred, and that fell apart. Betrayals happened rather quickly, and um, they've brought the ire of the SI onto Gary, at least more so than it was prior. As I said, chaos and anarchy. Eventually, hopefully, somebody will claim Praxis here and bring peace. I guess we'll see. The main thing I wanted from you, Henry, is, uh, well, some introductions. 
I get it if Mr. Danoff ain't quite ready to sit down and jaw yet, but, uh... I'd like to be introduced to some local mass I can trust. Or, you know, trust as much as anybody can trust anyone. As you ask that, he stops for a moment. Uh, um, are you hungry? I'm hungry. I feel like we should, uh... No, I bet you it's nice out right now. Let's head, uh, let's, uh, let's head the, st the streets. Let me show you, Gary, on a more personal level, and um, we can continue. And he looks around for a minute, and he uh, there's a on the concrete wall painted on, though weathered away and aged over the years, is a I guess you could call it a map of the sewer system that shows exits as needed and and the tunnel system. And you actually get a good look at this map. In fact. It's the map I sent you earlier, but just kind of painted down. Uh, and he kind of puts his finger on it. He traces a, a path up to what looks to be a manhole cover. He goes, uh, yeah, let's just a five minute walk. I bet the fresh air will do us good. And besides, when, don't you want to get your eyes on the gorgeous city of Gary? He smiles and begins to walk. Uh, All right, up there, huh? Okay, Adelaide, wrap up. And, she uh, pulls her hood tighter and you can see her pull the strings to kind of bring it close together. And uh, climb aboard, huh? She, without hesitation, climbs onto your back. Uh, and uh, Max obfuscates. As you do so, and he looks back, he double takes and is like, I'm going to assume you're still there, and continues yeah, to walk. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, and as your response, he leads you out. You push, he pushes open the manhole cover. As he uh, stands aside it, he counts uh, quietly to himself because he can't see you. And as soon as he counts to 10, he then shuts the manhole cover just to make sure it gives you enough time to get out. Uh, and he begins to yeah, walk. Yeah, we're here. <laughs> and he begins to walk the city streets. Here, as you arrive and pull out, you're greeted with, on your right-hand side, a few local pawn shops, uh, run down, uh, another rundown building that the door is not boarded up, but most of the windows are. And, as, and along with uh, a, uh, the bar's name of uh, Grandma's Tit, uh, on the other side of the street, was once a high school, certainly a large one, but now it is completely in disrepair. The gymnasium's roof is collapsed in entirely. Spray paint on the walls is obvious from this far out. And the school itself has bits and pieces of the brick building fallen away eons ago. This school hasn't seen use in God knows when. And as he uh, begins to stroll, he walks away from that school, down the block, down to the right. And once you're a d decent distance away, he just kind of clears his throat. <clears> I <throat> couldn't be sure, prying ears and all. Not all Nosferatu are friendly with one another, and I'd rather keep things as uh, peaceful as possible. Yeah, I'm aware of uh, not all Nosferatu getting along. Believe you me. He uh, does not respond to that, but clearly understands what you mean. And uh, says, about once a month, the Nos gather together an information exchange. As I said, most people are looking to keep Gary at peace. And while the Nos aren't particularly in bed with any of the kindred, a peaceful Gary means a peaceful existence for them as well. So about once a month, a gather happens, not too far in the sewers all. And he's like, I can just, you have a phone? And he like flips, uh, he grabs his phone. He's like, I can text you. No. Okay. Uh, Max pulls up. I guess Max has a burner phone. Oh, yeah. If you have a burner phone. Yeah. Sure. I didn't know if Max yeah. even carried one. He's like, uh, he sends you like, he's like, I can send you what manhole. Like, he'll send you the street in the manhole to go down where um, they're about there. But, uh, you know, uh, did, uh, this thing with my fingers here just uh, and Max pulls out like his little notepad. Detective just notepad. Writes it down, yeah, yeah. Writes it down in pencil. And he, as he does so, uh, as Max does so, he doesn't skip a beat. He just mount, He just speaks the address to you. Um, the month is, and uh, when is the month ending? And he actually looks at his phone. I guess in about four days, uh, they'll be gathering together. Um, Mr. Danov will not be there. I will, however, on his behalf. Uh, I am one of his, um, keepers, shall we say. I am not kindred like you. Uh, yeah, I assume, though, that you, uh, got a little something extra going on. He shrugs, don't we all? Speaking Understand of which. Oh, yeah, please. Uh, an associate of mine is going to be uh, moving into town, too. Kind of does for me what uh, or what you do for uh, Mr. Danoff. I see. Uh, we were aware of the kindred moving in, but no kind. Um, may you... Would you be comfortable sharing the details of who he is and his uh, abilities at the Nosferatu gathering? 
Yeah. Like I say, don't know for sure. He's uh, not with us right now. He's settled in another town for right now. But thought I should let you know. That might be a factor. Understood. Now, uh, if I may, and again, I speak on Mr. Danov's behalf. Please remember that. Should I say anything that might upset you? Gary is a small city. Uh, Max, kindred know each other here. We're very familiar with our faces. New faces are going to stick out like a sore thumb. Now, I don't think anybody outside of the Nosferatu network has any inklings as to why you're here. However, Mr. Danov has heard rumors. An extension of the prince's will is what he's heard. I'd be curious to know if that's true. Or if you're even willing to answer that question at the moment. But it is suspicious for a pack, or should I say a group of kindred, to move in from Chicago. You know, most people are leaving, Gary, not coming to it. Yeah, well, you know. Looking for a nice place to raise a kid, right? He nods. Like I said... We, or rather, Mr. Danov and his associates are looking for nothing more than peace. If what the rumors are true, as long as it brings peace, I see no issue with it. And besides, as far as Mr. Danov has spoken with me, uh, Prince Jackson is rather cordial with the Nosferatu, which is uh, uncommon uh, amongst Ventru in general. Never mind a Ventru yeah, prince. Yeah, yeah. He talks a good he talks a good game. I'll give him that. I bet he votes Democrat too. He's uh he smiles. We all know uh, that the elections are controlled by the prince. Hmm. So tell me this, Mister Danoff. Uh, he understands that uh, peace can sometimes require breaking a few heads, right? As a last ditch effort, yes. He prefers okay. to find a diplomatic solution to things, but the kindred are kindred, after all. Yeah, well, I ain't so good at the diplomacy end of things, but um, I don't want to step on Danov's toes. He seems like a stand-up guy. You can only take my opinion with a grain of salt, Max, but I agree. Of course, I'm going to agree, though. I've known Mr. Danov for many, many, many years. Yeah. How old are you, Henry? If you don't think that's rude. He, uh, he, he smiles and he goes, uh, I would hazard a guess I'd say I'm older than you. Huh. Well, I'm, uh, just north of a hundred, so congratulations. Your moisturization routine is working wonders. Can't say the same about mine, though. He smiles. I, uh, I don't know if I'd ever want a life like yours. At least in my line of work, should I choose to be done, I can be, and I can enjoy a permanent rest. Hmm. Yeah, well, no rest for the wicked, right? Beyond that, um, warnings, I, uh, I wouldn't say warnings, the prince's havens, public havens here, have been being squatted in for some time. Um, keep that in mind should you ever decide to visit their havens, whether for personal or educational reasons. Uh, you know, Mr. Danov has not had need to go clear them out, nor is it his prerogative or priority. But it is important to know should you get jumped or surprised. That might be a problem, but uh, something tells me my friends have a, will deal with it. Ah, that's... Uh, thank you for reminding me. That was the other thing I needed to inform you, your friends. Uh, and where they're currently holed up, they came through Gary a few nights ago. Word got to Mr. Danov rather quickly. Uh, and it seems they found themselves on the outskirts on the eastern side of the town. A uh, small little tire shop. Sims Tire Shop? Um, it's just... Tire like, Shop? Oh boy, if you ain't gonna like that. Oh man. <laughs> he, uh, uh, the reason they were brought there is, uh, from my understanding, it was the Prince of Gary's panic room so to speak, uh, a place he could go hide that nobody truly knew about. Of course, with the prince's disappearance, it didn't take long for it to be discovered. But while it was here, he had it rather well protected, and that's where they are. It's, again, my understanding. 
What other havens the prince got? Two others, a rather large mansion and a nice two-story home. Uh, rather distant from each other, but it covered the city. A one on the west, one toward the center, and the one on the east. Mansion, huh? Oh, that sounds <laughs> more Vera's speed. Tie a shop will do me, though. Uh, I will, I will simply give you directions. I'm not going to uh, escort you there. I hope that's all right with you. Uh, and he kind yeah, of just like fine. stay by the main road, go all the way until the very end, hit the high, blah, blah, blah. He gives you like the whole spiel of how to get to the shop. It's a bit of a walk, but not too bad. Uh, and um, as he's done finishing that up, he turns to face wherever the voice is coming from, doing his best to look at you directly and says, uh, well, Max, is, there, is that your only name? Should I call you... Maxwell, what do you prefer? Yeah, just Max is fine. Well, Max and Adelaide, uh, it was a pleasure. You were much kinder and much more affable than I expected. And uh, I think Mr. Uh, Mr. Danov will be pleased to hear that. Have a great rest of your evening. Unless there's nothing, anything else I can do for you, uh, I will be on my way. Nah, Henry, that's fine. You've, uh, uh, you've been a big help. Thanks. I imagine we'll see each other again. Gary is small after all. Yeah, maybe at that their uh, Nasmut or whatever. He smirks, and as he smirks, a car with tinted windows and uh, in a completely black uh, paint job kind of rolls up quickly, glides to a stop with its engines rolling, and uh, and uh, this uh, the, the guy you've been speaking to smiles and uh, kind of gives you a salute to goodbye, just like a, a lazy salute, and turns to the car, opens the back door, takes a seat, shuts it, and the car rolls off. Okay, well, nice neighbors anyhow, huh, kid? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, he was actually really nice. He was nicer than anyone was in New York, ever. Yeah, well, all. that's New York for you, right? Yeah, I guess so. I, so we're going to a tire shop then? Are we going, is that where we're going now? I reckon so. Yeah, I figured the others probably had time to clear that out. Okay. And, well, uh, haven't given it much thought yet, but it might be good for both of us to, uh, go to that there NOS meetup a few nights from now. Yeah, I was, I was kind of thinking the same thing. I actually kind of got excited when I heard. I've never seen, like, a NOS come together like that, but, I mean, I'm still really young, so I don't know. Yeah, and, uh, that piece of shit Gustav liked to keep you under wraps, didn't he? Oh, yeah. I, I worked for him exclusively. Okay. Didn't you? Didn't, didn't you? Yeah, pretty much. Till I got out from under his thumb. I, uh... Which is something I wanted to talk to you about. Oh, uh, well, I definitely don't feel any urge to continue Gustav's work. I promise. No, no. <laughs> well, yeah. I think you're out from under his thumb, considering those thumbs is dust and ash. I still, that's... I still can't quite accept that. It's so hard to believe that he's gone. He... He's gone, kid. All the way gone. So, like I was saying, when I got up from under Gustav's thumb, it was, well, I was bound to him, like you were. And like you are to me right now. This this feels different. I'm happy working with you. I'm I, I I I would do anything for you, regardless. I would I would I would defend you if I had to. You gave me a gun for for God's sake. Yeah, I know, kid. I know. But you know that's because you've been drinking the blood, right? I mean, I'm sure. I'm sure it makes it. It just solidifies what I already felt. Are you sure? Hey, I'm not trying to deny that I'm a charming fella with lots of great qualities, but I'd feel better if we was friends on, you know, your own terms. And you don't think what I got, it wasn't just about Gustav. I can't be bound. I've drank out of Kindred's blood. They can't bind me. It's something I got. Something a few other Kindred that I've met over the years have got. And I think it's something you can have, too. You, you think it's part of... 
like like Gustav's lineage? Maybe. It's, I just you you It'd be pointed funny out. if it was though, huh? <laughs> really worked against them, didn't it? She chuckles a little bit to him to that. Uh, it's it's weird though, right? Like you're 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 Gustav's uh, offspring, child, I guess. And you don't look like a child to me. Yeah, it sounds so well, weird to say it like that. You're Gustav's. Yeah, just, imagine how I feel. <laughs> but he made both of us, right? It's just you can so, drink kindred blood and not get bound, and I can and only. You can only drink kindred right. blood. Right. So I figure this would be a very useful skill for you to develop. Should I? If it's possible. Do you think I should drink someone else's instead? No, 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 kid. I don't want you bound to nobody, but at least mm -hmm. if you're bound to me, at least I know there ain't some shit heel gonna be get telling you what to do. Yeah, yeah. Just this shit heel. She, uh, again, another awkward giggle comes from her. Um, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I just want you to know, even if I'm not bound to you, though, I will, I, I owe you my life. You, you, you freed me. Okay, all right. But uh, let's leave boons and shit out of it, all right? Yeah. I'll do that. I don't, I have never, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> well, uh, I don't know how, I don't, I don't, man, I don't even know, I don't even know where to begin to, 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 to try and fight against it. It doesn't even, Max, it doesn't even feel like I'm bound to you. It doesn't feel like that at all. Wow, well, it's an avenue we can explore. Okay. It's not like I took yoga classes and learned how to do this, so, I don't know. We'll figure it out together. She just uh, silently nods, uh, even though you can't see her. You're so used to her at this point, you probably could understand that that's her response. Are you walking this whole time as you're speaking with her? Yeah, like, towards we're the general along. area? As, uh, she's still on my she's still on my back. That's what I figured. Uh, we want to we want to stay cloaked. As uh, as you round a corner, uh, you almost get bumped into, but the person can't see you, and because of the way um, uh, invisibility works, basically in this game. Uh, it's his brain sees you and then forgets you're there and he'll naturally go around you. Um, so as you turn the corner, a this guy comes like, sp not sprinting, but very quickly jogging. And just as he's about to hit you, he like does a little skid like moment turn and kind of goes around you. And uh, you hear him um, cursing uh, a fucking Toreador, that stupid bitch. And it's you know, like, I can't believe they pinned me down. What was that guy? A fucking, was he a Bears fan? Or like, it's like, he's like, bitching to himself the whole time. Um, mm -hmm. Just kind of like grumbling and mumbling and just jogging away uh, down past you. Um, and then you you feel, you can feel Adelaide move like on your shoulders to maybe follow the person like looking. Um, and then as the, he kind of rounds a building, you hear her goes, was he talking about? Yeah, I think he was. Uh, Interesting. We go get mm. him? Maybe it might be worth having it a little chat. I just don't want them to be dead, or I don't know what he was. I just heard him using. Yeah, uh, let's uh, so you, let's go have a word with our friend. Sure, and because he's not running fast, he's just jogging. You're able to catch up very quickly, especially since if you wanted to, you could do the leap move and just mm -hmm. jump on top of a nearby building a good distance away, and you could see him running down a sidewalk from the, a top view. Is that something? Is that how Max would do it, or? So yeah, 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 he's he's gonna be carrying her piggyback. Sure. Style, so we don't actually up. don't see him, but we can hear the whipping of winds as his uh, a trench coat like gets uh, you know whips around as he jumps, and we can uh, hear the thud as we see dust and concrete kick up. Oh, from actually, lands. you can't even hear no thud. That's you right. Yeah, see yeah, a you got silence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all we see is nothing. We hear the jumping uh, of the whipping of cloaks, and as our camera blurs across a couple of blocks. Uh, we, we kind of, the camera follows a motion of landing, but we see nobody, we hear nothing, we see no evidence or dust kick up. Uh, and as you kind of land on the roof and take a step forward, you, you realize you're standing on top of a two-story liquor floor, a uh, liquor store. The second floor is likely where the people live. Um, you can see him jogging down just, uh, he's like to your left and he's moving to your right. He's like crossing you on the sidewalk. Okay. We're going to find a nice abandoned street. Oh, um, there's so many of those. There's like yeah. one right around the corner that you could easily grab on to go, like go to. Yeah, that's where I'm going to head to. Going to intercept them there where there's nobody around. So you are cut them off. You go just at the end of the block and leap off the building and stand on the sidewalk of a road that is has potholes. The, um, the, the street lines that are painted on are 
totally worn away with the bare minimum there to kind of indicate what road of the lane, what road, side of the road you should be staying on. Um, and you, uh, on the sidewalk itself is countless broken bottles and trash and McDonald's wrappers, you name it, it's all there. But not a single soul seems to be wandering this street at this hour at all. And as he continues to jog, you jump down. Do you just make yourself come in, uh, come visible? Yeah, I reckon so. As, uh, how gonna, far away from him, from you, do you want him to be when you come visible? Uh, not, uh, not, you know, popping up so he's going to draw a gun or something like okay, that. Okay, so you, I was going to, uh, I was like, if you pop, he's, he's a bruja, he may need to roll a fear frenzy if you just show up a foot in front of him. No, no. Okay, enough so if, that he sees he sees us both sort of yeah. appear on the street, and, uh, but also close enough that he can hear me say at a normal level, "Hey, fella, what's the rumpus?" So we see uh, a profile shot of the sidewalk. We watch as this individual jogs down the sidewalk, but when he's about five to six feet away, we rippling into existence with Adelaide on his back and a, almost a blink of an eye, stands Maxwell, a scarf covering his face. Hat pulled over, as not just in case any eyes are around, as Adelaide, Adelaide climbs down and stands just about like a few inches behind you. You see him stop, and uh, the look on his face goes from frustrated, like it was before, to now just genuinely annoyed. And he goes, he, he just, you actually can hear him. He doesn't keep it super quiet. He's like, are you fucking kidding me? And uh, Hey, he, whoa, whoa, whoa. This ain't no kind of hold up or nothing. I just want to talk, all right? When you say that, you can see he looks over his shoulders and he is absolutely, in Max's eyes, calculating whether he has, if it's better for him to leave or engage with you and speak. Um, so when you say we only have a few questions, he's not looking at you. He turns his head over to the left. When you look at him, you see him wearing a beaten up, stained white shirt that has a faded logo of a band that says Baby Chorus on it. And he has long jeans that are completely like... Uh, like worn into uh, nearly holes into his knees are very light blue from how often he wears them and uh, very simple, boring sneakers. Uh, he's just a generally boring looking individual. He's nothing special. He's got a very short, short, like almost buzz cut short hair, but not quite that short and a completely clean shaven face. Um, as he, So he starts to kind of almost calculate. Uh, does Max do anything else? Yeah, don't get antsy, fella. I don't want to have to chase you down. Like I said, I just want to talk. Uh, you can see him finishing, whether he thinks it's worth it or not, and he doesn't move, but he makes you come to him. Now then, I couldn't help but overhear you there, talking to yourself about a Toreador. God damn it, I should have known fucking Nosferatu everywhere in this goddamn city. Yeah, not a great place to mutter aloud to yourself. No, and you're a face I haven't seen before, so are you also coming you from tell? Chicago? Oh, tr what? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he goes, yeah, he, he goes, yeah. and you're someone, he goes, well, I haven't seen or met anybody who wraps themselves up like a 40s noir detective. Uh, nice point. Mine is this. What do you know about this Tori, though, and what happened? She's a fucking... Sounds like you had a bit of a run-in with some folks I know. Yeah, they ran into me and then made me out to be the guy in the wrong, fucking assholes. I was right. just, well, listen. Tell me your side of things. Yeah, it's simple. I, I don't know how long you've been in the city. Welcome to Gary, in case it hasn't been that long. There's been a bounty put out for a book to be found. Is a, a, a Malkavian, that's the, a Malkin Gary that's looking for a book called The Visionary. It's like got a bunch of philosophical stuff, garbage in there as far as I know. Uh, and he's willing to pay a hundred fucking grand to get it. Um, and then, so I, you know, I don't know if you know, but hey, guess what? There's no leadership in Gary. Uh, Prince is gone. Everybody's gone. So I figure, hey, where's the best place to get maybe like a head start on where this could be? The Prince's Old Haven. At least one of them, right? So I go to the one that has uh, nobody in it. The other one, the mansion, has like people staying there. So fuck that place. I went to the, the there's like a house that he has. This nice, rather nice yeah, house. two-story house, right? Two-story house, yeah. And his groundskeeper still takes care of his lawn. So it still looks like people live there. It's crazy. But... You know, I was like, okay, well, let's go, you know, rob the fa the tombs, the tomb of the Pharaoh, as it were. Maybe there's a little bit of a hint there. Went in there, was going through some paperwork, looking for it. Yeah. And then I was... Here's the thing, though, kid. Pharaoh's tombs usually got curses on them, right? Yeah. Well, lo and behold, no more than an hour of me being in there. And uh, I didn't hear a goddamn thing, but a whole 
slew of other kindred showed up and they busted the door in and some fucking asshole wearing a cowboy's, uh, not cowboys, wearing a bear's shirt and some <laughs> asshole bitch who's wearing like tight clothing for some fucking reason and Gary, like uh -huh. they were, they were like, hey, you can't be here. And I was like, under whose authority? And they were like, you going to do anything about it? And I was like, no, I guess not. Can I go? And then I, I left and they basically just kind of kicked me out and, oh, and, but Vera, uh, I mean, um, but the Toreador lady said that she was going to pay double the bounty if we brought the book to her. Uh, if you know them, can she pay 200 grand? Is she dead serious? Or is that just like, yeah, a she's a woman of means. Look, I don't know nothing about no book and I ain't trying to me stand either. in your way of a hundred grand or 200 grand. I just want to get the fuck out of the city, yet. man. And I recommend you do the same. This place sucks. Uh, well, I just got here, so I'm probably going to stick around for a little bit. What's your name? Uh, you can call me Garrett. Garrett from Gary? God damn it. Yes, Garrett from Gary. They said the same damn thing. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, I mean, okay, look, Garrett, I'm Max, okay? Vera is a straight shooter when it comes to money. So if she wants this book and she says she can pay you, she can. I don't know why. Yeah. All right. I mean, I'm not going to question. I don't know why anybody wants this goddamn thing, but a hundred grand or 200 grand is a hundred grand or 200 grand. And I can fucking go to LA if I want to with that kind of money. The Camarilla's fucking gone out there. Maybe the Anarchs have done it better. He, he leaves it at that and looks around. So, uh, what do you, you gotta mean? not run your mouth so much, kid. It's not like I care, but. You could easily be talking to somebody who did. Yeah, yeah, thanks. You're right. I'm just fucking stressed the hell out. Tonight has been a bad oh. night. Okay, okay. Well, I'd recommend listening to whatever Vera said. 200 grand sounds better than 100 grand, don't it? Oh, yeah. As if you're telling me she can, well, I don't know if I can trust you either, to be fair, but if she can. Yeah, well, we just met, right? Yeah, he shrugs, exactly. I don't even know if I'll find the goddamn thing, but if I do... I will see if I can get that 200 grand first. Okay. And uh, where was this again? Uh, where in town, this two-story house? Oh, it's in the suburb. Well, I guess you'd call it the suburbs at this point. Uh, he, he's like, gives you directions to a small uh, area of like five or six blocks of buildings. In that general direction, you'll be able to tell the house it's the only one that's being upkept. Okay. How long ago was this? He uh, looks at, a, he pulls out a phone, like just a blatant phone and looks at it like two hours ago. Mm. Maybe, no, yeah. three hours ago, the three hours now. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, thanks. Yeah, no problem. Uh, can I do anything else for you? I just want to make sure we're on a good, you know, good page. If you really do have the 200 grand, I want to make sure... Hey, I didn't say I had 200 grand. Does it look like I have 200 grand for No, no, sake? no, but you're with them, right? So... Yeah, well, friends of mine. You know how shit... Uh, uh, sorry, just a, yeah. uh Just a, What was his name again? I just want to write it Garrett. down so I don't forget. G-A-R-R-E-T-T. Oh, that's right, e Garrett. <laughs> and he actually he goes, uh, Garrett, with... Oh, two R's and two T's. Yeah, and he goes, uh, double the R, double the T's. Please don't forget. I hate when people spell my name wrong. All right, hold on. So he pulls out the notepad again. <laughs> two R's. Two T's. Two T's. Thank you. I appreciate it. There you go. No worries, Garrett. <sighs> okay. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, I don't know if I can help with any answer any other your, your questions, but um, yeah, uh, this place sucks. Yeah, so no one's calling the shots here at all, huh? Depends on who you ask. Some, like any place without true leadership, plenty of people are calling themselves, themselves the leader now. And, uh, with and uh, any re without, I you, mean, sorry, go ahead. Who do you think's got the best shot of uh, making that claim be true? Who's the I, toughest son of a bitch in town? That's what I'm asking. He smiles. That is an answer. I don't know if I have an answer for. Everybody's at each other's throats. It's crazy. The people who are trying to work together are stabbing each other in the back faster than they start working together. It's no wonder the Camarilla have fucking such an easy time holding their law most of the time. Everybody's chaos when they leave. Uh, no, I wouldn't say anybody has a better chance than anyone else at the moment. Anytime, for instance, did you know there was a group that ended up bringing the SI's fucking wrath down onto Gary in hopes of trying to kill other kindred? Fucking idiots. 
Hmm. This is this is why Gary's falling apart. Nobody thinks more than the the next night ahead. Nobody's like sure. worth playing. No one's playing chess. They're just playing war. It's frustrating. Okay, okay, Garrett. Garrett. Sorry to hear about your political situation. He, he just kind of waves it away. He's like, it's typical nonsense, Camarilla. Without a prince or, or, or even an anarch baron, whoever runs the city. As long as you can hold on to your ground, you run that ground. And that is the law of the land in Gary at the moment. So depending on where you live, I mean, depending on where you walk, you might be running into someone who claims that that block is theirs. You might run into somebody who's claiming the entire 10 blocks are theirs. As long as they can fight and hold it, who are you to fucking argue? Okay. Yeah, you're talking about how nobody's organized enough to pull this all together. No. But I asked you, who is the toughest son of a bitch in town? So, who's best able to hold territory? I would imagine And this. I'm talking one-on-one. -on -one. I would imagine. I haven't seen her in a while, but I would imagine it'd be Evelyn. Evelyn, huh? Yeah, she was, um... The Baron's kid. And the Baron's gone now, too. People thought the Baron killed the Prince of Gary, but then the Baron disappeared, so who fucking knows? If Evelyn wanted to make a, a, a break for it, I imagine she could. For one reason or another, she hasn't bothered me. I imagine it's kind of like golden handcuffs, right? You have the power, but now all the problems that come with it. And uh, she's an anarch, huh? Uh-huh. And uh, moreover, she's a bruja, like I am, and... Like, uh, Juggler was, or is, maybe, if he's still alive. Juggler? Who's Juggler? He was the Anarch Baron, uh, opposing the ah. Camarilla Prince here in Gary. Yeah, so, uh, her sire. Okay. Yeah, Modius was, uh, the Cam Prince out here. I knew that much. Mm. All right, then. Thank you very much, Gary. Nice chatting with you. Yeah, you too, uh... I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go just enjoy the rest of the night and start fresh on the search tomorrow night. Well, don't let me hold you up. And uh, Max lights a cigarette. Does he flinch at all? At Absolutely. The when you when you do it, and, and Adelaide flinches every time too. She's still not quite used to fire. But as soon as you light it up, he does flinch. He's God damn it, dude. And knowing that Max actually like he turns his body so that Adelaide mm. is completely shielded from the flame. Sure, so he's sure, actually yeah. turned towards Toward him. He's the he, only one. Yeah. Uh, he says, God damn it, dude. And then he turns and waves nonchalantly with his back to you. Don't worry, kid. You'll get used to it over time. Uh, without a response, he turns a corner and he's gone. Okay. Uh, well. This, Adelaide goes, Gary's way worse than I thought. Mm-hmm. No, these are the people in your neighborhood, kid. In your neighborhood. In your neighborhood. Why don't we go check out that tire store, huh? I figure the others are probably uh, three hours from now. Yeah. They probably wrapped up their business at that house. Unless you want to go take a look. I mean, do you want me to go look for you? Nah, nah. We're going to stick together for now. Yeah, I don't want to go. Settle. I don't want to go anywhere where you're not going to go, so. You bet, kid. Come on. And uh, she follows in tow right behind you. It's a bit of a walk. Do you use the streets or do you go back into the sewers out of curiosity? Uh, I think probably given that we've got a good idea of the layout of the sewers anyway, uh, probably just cloak up again, get Adelaide on, on his back and obfuscate again. Okay, so you're going to stay, uh, you said on the streets? On the streets, okay. yeah. Uh, all right, so you wander or walk in that direction for quite a while it's another couple of hours of you wandering we uh, eastward toward where uh, the supposed tire shop is and actually just so adelaide gets a nice view of the town max puts her up on his shoulders this time because he's he's strong mm, enough yeah yeah you definitely matter. are strong enough uh yeah so you you hoist her up on her shoulders and it's like holding very little you have the strength beyond almost anyone Maybe a gangrel could meet you, and a lupine, perhaps. But beyond that, no. Um, let's see if I can find a picture of the tire shop that I use. I can't remember how I found it last time. Regardless, at the end of the walk, uh, as you kind of walk away outside of Gary and the buildings become more and more sparse, you're not met with like a forest or anything gorgeous like that. Instead, you're met with kind of open fields, patches of trees, and a lot of those fields are just overgrown with piles of trash. 
just left on the side. Black trash bags stacked next to each other, abandoned vehicles of all different sorts as you walk, litter the streets of Gary. Lots of them are missing tires completely, windows smashed in. Um, any name of vandala uh, vandalization has seemed to occur on countless different cars in Gary. But eventually, the city gives way into the moonlit night to a rather beat-up back road that eventually turns off into a dirt road that leads to a building that you can see ahead. Now, you're not on the dirt road quite yet. You're standing at the forefront of it. But ahead of you, you can see a very small white building. It says Sims Tire Shop spray painted on the side of this white building in a red spray paint. And the uh, door itself is not boarded, but it, the entire building looks like it has not seen true business in years. The concrete where cars would park are cracked with weeds starting to grow out of it. There is a single car parked out there uh, off in the back right hand corner that is also missing its tires but its windows are not completely shattered only just the side ones the front one isn't so much and then even past that is uh, uh beyond a chain link fence more another giant pile of black trash bags and then weeds and weeds and weeds past it uh and she adelaide even kind of you can hear her take an uh, almost reflexively like a small gasp even though she doesn't need to uh and she kind of goes uh, I wow, wow. Yeah, this is even worse than what we had in New York. Yeah, well, looks like it's gonna be home sweet home for now, kid. At least until we find somewhere better. This is just how it always uh, from, goes down. I guess so. Listen, any place that's out of the sun is good enough for me. Awareness roll. Awareness. Wits awareness. Yes, sir. Messy critical. Wow. Holy crap. Um, so with a messy critical, you hear the first thing you hear after speaking with Adelaide and kind of letting those words fall from your lips in that gravelly voice is something that shatters the conversation instantly. Inside of the building, you hear what sounds like a crashing crumble followed by a loud slam of something hitting the ground. Uh, there is voices from the inside you hear you can't hear words um you're too far out but you can hear shouting of a few different female voices maybe multiple and then that voice sounded like that sounded like the guy from chicago that sounded like the guy who's joined you now uh oh. yeah mr kowalski but before you can even act on that behind you you hear movement you hear the snapping of a tree and uh, garbage being tripped, not tripped over, but like moved very gently. And as you whip oh. around to see what sits behind you, you actually see two individuals, both dressed in plain, boring clothing, a female and a male, somewhere in their 30s. And they are absolutely, are you invisible still? Yes, they are absolutely yeah. eyeing the tire shop and making their way in that direction. Okay, we're gonna, just walk or let you know walk to the side and sure. let them pass you get a good look at them then, as they walk past yeah as the two walk by you the woman has her hair in a very uh tight cut like it's a i wouldn't call it like a bob but it's a kind of shaved in the back and for the most part very short all the way up to the front um and she has a a, a very light reddish hair the gentleman has just a thick mustache followed by a five o'clock shadow on the sides and his hair is a little longer than hers, but messy and unkempt. Uh, and just by looking, it looks like they both probably haven't seen a shower in a couple of days. Um, and they are absolute, well, the woman is strapped. You could see the gun holstered on her left hip. It's not in the visible hip that's on her right where she would be walking by you, it's on the inside, but you catch a glimpse of it. But the thing you catch a glimpse of with the critical is in the gentleman's right pant leg as he walks, the jeans pull up just a little bit because they're just a little, they, you know, they're a little, they rise as you walk a little bit and you catch what you believe to be the tip of a stake stuck in his, strapped to his leg, just under his jeans. He, you see uh, on him as well, also a pistol strapped on him. Okay. I'm going to let them pass. Okay. And then follow right behind them okay are you gonna they like i said they are walking directly over to the to the building um as they approach 
uh, the man splits off. There's like a, not even a word said between them. It's, it's as though it's almost pre-programmed. They hit a point and he immediately peels off to the left. It starts going to the back where the chain link fence and the, uh, the area where that one car sits is. And she is making her way over to the door, uh, but she presses her back up against the door and seems to be trying to just take a moment, listen, maybe waiting for him to take his place. You're not entirely sure. Okay, I'm gonna wait until he's out of sight of her. Yep, it doesn't take too much. He's uh, around the corner. Yeah. Carrying a stake ain't very polite, so I figure I'm gonna take a poke at him. Just smack him one. Oh, because you're gonna follow him around and uh, Fair, wait yeah. until she can't see. Yep, that. yep. So and he, I'm gonna take try to take him out silently. Please do. He only gets because he does not know you're there. He only gets one d10 to roll, so I can't imagine he's gonna be able to do much. Uh, this will be uh, strength brawl. Strength, mm -hmm. strength brawl. Okay. If you're just going to pop him one. Are you holding back at all? I imagine you're just trying to end this man's career. Yeah, sure. yeah. Considering his career seems to be vampire hunting, <laughs> I think uh, that's probably a good idea. Okay. Uh, I'm nervous. Let's see the roll. So, where do you is, aim uh, for? Where are you punching this man? Are you punching him? Are you picking him up? What are you doing? Uh, basically, I think, uh, this is a move that Max has done before. He's just gonna do the old punch through the head. Okay, thing. inelegant and messy is what you're going for. Mm -hmm. So you stroll, That's me. <laughs> stroll up behind him. Um, Adelaide, did you have her follow you, or would you have had her stay up front? I'm curious. Uh, well, she's, uh, only cloaked when she's on my Yeah, back, she's on your shoulders, so... that's true, so she's not, she's yeah, there. Yeah, so... I imagine, so she, yeah, yeah, just she had to come off Yeah, I get this. her to scramble down onto mm -hmm. my back. And then boom. with a one, and as your fist careens through the air, feeling the wind hit it, it moves at such an unnatural speed. Once it meets the back of the head of this man, you pass through the hair, the skin, and the skull cracks and fractures like thin ice on you. You push all the way through, and there's not a word, no scream, no whisper could even reach or, or, or escape his lips before that um, the the attack, the assault, ends his life. And as the head is crushed and bits of bone and brain spew out the back where the, the stem meets the brain where you kind of cracked him and you pull your hand out with this suction kind of pop, he falls dead face first onto the ground, little twitches to his body as a gaping cavity in the back lets the rest of his brain kind of ooze out along with the, with the blood and it pools underneath him uh, very quickly. Do you have any hunger out of curiosity? Are you hungry? Uh, I got my usual one hunger. That's not a, yeah, no big deal. So blood bags with me. Uh, and she's topped off as well because you fed her the last time we kind of got together. So she's not like ravenous for blood, even even if the human blood wouldn't do anything for her. But as he twitches to the ground, uh, on the ground, you can hear Adelaide. Um, well, you look back and Adelaide is looking away. She's like turned to the side. She's not really wanting to look at what you were about to do. Uh, she knows she knows what you're capable of, and she knows when she doesn't want to see it. Um, she actually, when she hears whatever sounds are done, she actually whispers, is he, is he gone? Is he done? All done, kid. What about her? Now let's go take care of the other yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you going to go back invisible? Uh, yep. Oh, yeah. Okay. You will need to roll a hunger check because you're trying to move while being invisible. You get Rouse one check failed. extra hunger. So you're at two. Not a big deal still. Cool. And as you round the corner, she stands there. And she is looking in the direction of where you're coming from. And she truly does look as you kind of look her in the face. Actually, make me a wits insight check to read the emotions on her, on her face. Three successes, I think. Oh, damn, yep, three successes. There is a steely, stoic look that is on her face, well maintained of her emotions, perhaps the stress or even anxiety she's feeling in this moment. But as you stand and approach, and she continues to look, there is a gentle, furrowed brow ever so oh, ever so visible as you get closer. It looks as though she's confused why she hasn't heard anything yet, but she's still standing there giving him time, enough time for you to approach her before she realizes you're even there. Okay. Mm-hmm. She's gonna, she's, I think uh, a little information might be good. So Max is basically just gonna try to grab her, mm -hmm. pin her arms and cover her mouth. Uh, that's another strength brawl. Uh, she does not get an opposed roll other than a 1d10, so difficulty of 1, because, again, she's being surprised. And she is simply a mortal. Uh, so that is... Oh, my God, you messy criticaled. Yes, but two extra... 
No, you didn't miss a critical. Successes. You didn't miss a critical. You just uh, succeeded at three. So sorry. You didn't yeah. That's two good. extra automatic yeah. successes. So very swift. Or sorry, three extra automatic successes. Don't yeah. I have both? You're just, yeah, three? yeah. 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 Um, but you're not really trying to kill her here. You're just trying to grab her. So no. as she, you maybe even wait a moment. And as time passes, she does begin to, she takes a step to head back there to see what's going on. And as she does so, she presents her back to you, no longer pressed up against the wall. And Max taking her kiss cue, not waiting for any other opportunity, steps swiftly behind her, wraps his left arm under her, her uh, wrapping your left arm under her left arm, covering her mouth while your hand goes behind her head and you pull her, put her in like a full Nelson kind of block. And you with effortlessly can pull her up to her tippy toes because she, you're just much taller than she is. So she can't really uh, do much in this moment. She may try and fight uh, for the first round or two, um, but we'll see uh, what it is that you're going to do next. What is your next intention to do with her as you have her? Uh, basically, just hold her hand over the mount mm -hmm. uh, and say, Hey, lady, what's the rumpus? Do you let her talk or no? Not yet. So, so she's yes. going to, so the next round, she struggles. Let's see how we do. And three successes on top of this. Yeah, not enough, unfortunately, for her. Um, she does struggle and actually does surprise you by how, by how, how wily she's actually being. Um, clearly, her, her, uh, she doesn't rely on her strength, but on her dexterity. And um, she's trying to maneuver her way out, but as she is quickly reminded, kindred are much more strong than any normal kind, and she cannot pull herself free. Okay, lady, just take it easy. I think you know I could just snap you in half right now. But I ain't gonna, unless you give me a reason to. Uh, she does struggle a little bit more, but basically she struggles until she realizes she cannot. Uh, and we'll say that takes another three or so seconds before she finally settles. Okay. Now, no yelling or nothing. And then he just sort of like moves his hand down. So he's still holding her jaw, but not covering her mouth. It says, now why don't you tell me what you and your buddy were doing showing up here with wooden stakes. She spits on the ground. Go fuck yourself, you blank body. Fuck! Blank body? What the hell does that mean? And she, I like, assume it's an insult. <laughs> she struggles... Just uh, by context. Just by context, I know <laughs> this is an insult. <laughs> she struggles again. Uh, more wiggling, and but not like nearly as hard as before. She's like, you're a blank body. Fucking you deserve to fucking burn. Blank body fuck. Yeah. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. How about you speak English? You're a parasite on society, you fucking vampire. Okay. See, those are words that I understand. You soulless parasite. husk of a body. Walking. Mm. Oh, things. blank body. There you go. Now that makes Glad sense. Glad I can educate you, you, fucking asshole. Kill me and get yeah, it over with, or fight me with honor, you asshole. Yeah. Why don't you tell me what you're doing here? Following a lead. You are. Right. Oh, you a hunter? Is that it? Do you, she doesn't say anything. She actually keeps her mouth shut. Do you like pat yeah. her down? Do you try to like pull her belongings off of her? Actually, I get uh, Adlet's like, uh, hey kid, why don't you make sure? Why don't you make sure she doesn't got nothing hit on her? Adelaide comes from around the corner uh, where she kind of like stayed and waited. Uh, as she walks up, uh, keeps her hood pulled. She does. She starts. She pulls the gun off of her first. Pats down her legs and. She pulls a stake off of her right one, uh, drops that on the Ooh, ground. Ooh, that's nasty. And that she, ain't polite. That and ain't then for her back all. pocket, she pulls like a leather wallet thing. And as she steps back, she opens it. And in her hand, you see an FBI badge. Ooh, a Fed, huh? I didn't realize there was a Federal v uh, Bureau of Vampire Hunting. She doesn't, again, once again, uh, she doesn't say anything. Other, uh, She responds, yeah, be terrified. We are everywhere. Uh, Adelaide mm. speaks up. Agent uh, Pasternak is her name. Okay, Agent Pasternak. We're gonna have a little chat. Uh, she refuses to say anything. Hmm. Yeah. You clam up around me, but I got friends who are way more persuasive. In that, uh, in that moment. Uh, oh, well, actually, continue. I'll let you go for a little bit more. She, again, for the most part, you're not going to get a response unless, yeah. Uh, check if she's got some cuffs on her somewhere. No. Uh, Max has zip ties. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so he basically zip is just going arms. to use, yeah, 
Yeah, basically, get Adelaide's help as well. It's like you just like, uh, hey, kid, in my pocket, I got some zip ties. Why don't you get in there? All yeah, right. Uh, here, go, here you go. Here you go. You want me and to do anything? Improvise a get. Yeah, she, she helps as long the way. Yep. You got like, there's so much trash on the ground. You could grab paper bags. You could grab cloth. You could just use your own cloth. Whatever you want to gag her with, you can probably find. Yeah, I'm not going to, uh, you know. I'm not gonna put garbage in them out, so it's just yeah, strip a cloth. <laughs> sure, okay, yeah, you're not mean to her. I got yeah. it. Well, not that mean to her. So you shove, you stuff uh, a piece of cloth that you maybe rip off of, of your clothing uh, and zip tie her hands, and very quickly she is immobilized. You zip tie her legs too. Yeah, okay. zip tie her feet, throw yep. her over the shoulder. Yep. So um, again, there's a little bit of struggling, but realizing a, yeah, she is outmatched. She, you hear, <laughs> but no words can truly be understood. What about sound from inside? What's uh, what's going on? As there? you throw her over your shoulder and she gives way, the voices seem to have quieted down. Um, but there is a single voice, because this all happened, you did this in the matter of, we'll say, 30 seconds. It was very quick. You kind of walked up, took care of him, turned around and came back. It was like 10 minutes of game time, but in the world it was maybe 30 seconds. So not long after the giant like sound of, of, of uh, something giving way and then like a, something thudding. And because you're so close to the door, you're actually able to hear a single word uttered from a female voice that you do not recognize. It is not Vera's. It is confused, surprised, and it simply goes, Bob? And on that, we close. And we will return next week for the new episode where our coterie comes back together. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>